Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and we would also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well, so please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are continuing our series on Python tutorials for algorithmic trading and trading strategies, and today we are investigating a very commonly used and famous technical trading rule that is moving average, convergence and divergence, or MACD for short. And today we'll learn how to apply it in Python, how to code your own trading bot based on MACD signals, and how to apply it to a real stock in real time and calibrate our strategy based on market data imported from Yahoo Finance. So first of all, let's consider the packages that we'll need to import to proceed implementing our code. So first of all, we need our usual NumPy and Pandas for arrays and data frames respectively. We'll need to import the Yahoo Finance, Y Finance package as YF for brevity, and you'll need to install it separately using a pip install command in your Anaconda environment. And we also need to import the matplotlib pyplot as PLT for the visualization of graphs and equity curves. So let's import those and proceed with coding our strategy. So let's specify which stock we're going to choose to trade based on moving averages. And let's consider ExxonMobil, XOM is the ticker, which is a famous and uh, large uh, US-based energy stock. Now let's download our stock price data, code our uh, data frame from Yahoo Finance as just data, and use the Yahoo Finance download function, specifying our ticker, which is the string variable stock, and start and end dates as uh, string variables using the date in American format. So let's start in 2016. 2016-0101, so January 1st, 2016, and and yesterday, so 2021-0317, 17th of March, 2021. And now we can specify our strategy parameters, so the parameters of our MACD uh, trading rule, and it involves coding the length, the period, of our short moving average and our long moving average. And having calculated both, we'll be able to determine when those two cross and determine positive and negative trends based on the crossings, the intersections of uh, moving averages and retrieve trading signals from these facts. So we need to code the period of the short moving average, calling it short MA, and we can put any integer here and let's consider five. That's one of the most commonly used periodicities for a short moving average. And for the long moving average, the commonly used periodicity is 12. You might also encounter 12 and 26, that's the second most famous configuration, and you can specify any uh, framework using these two variables by specifying any two integer variables and uh, looking at the strategy that is defined with those. And also, we need to consider trading fees to make our analysis more robust and more reliable, uh, comparing it to a buy and hold strategy that does not incur any active portfolio management fees. And let's consider that our fee is quite low, albeit still material, at 5 basis points. So 0 0.0005. That would be 5 basis points. So 500th of a percent. Now, having specified these strategy parameters, we can start coding our technical analysis signals. And those, uh, quite obviously, would rely on computing moving averages, both short and long, and looking at their intersections, when the one is above or below the other. To do that, we can quite handily use the built-in function in the pandas package and code our moving averages as separate columns, as separate series, in our data data frame. So we can write new columns in the data data frame using the following procedure. We can say data, open uh, brackets, and uh, input the name of the new column, and let's call it MA for moving averages, plus string variable of short MA, so that would be 
a column called MA5, and we'll be able to easily refer to it in our further analysis. And we'll use the built-in pandas rolling mean function to calculate our moving average by applying it to the closing prices, data close. This is the template that Yahoo Finance provides when you download market price data from their database. And we'll apply the rolling function. And here in parentheses, you can specify the periodicity of your rolling window. And it is equal to our short MA variable we have just defined. And then we need to specify which function do we want to apply to this rolling window. And obviously it would be the average called mean in this package. And now we can also code the long moving average the same way, just copying the code across and changing short to long in the relevant places. And we also can code the return, just calling it data return. And this column can be calculated from the closing prices by using another pandas built-in function, percentage PCT underscore change and empty parentheses afterwards. That will calculate day by day return of our ExxonMobil stock and we'll be able to trade based on our signals and figure out which return our strategy would obtain and how it compares to the buy and hold return when we just buy ExxonMobil at the start of our period and sell it at the end of our trading period. Now we can finally simulate our trading strategies based on our signals and uh, to do that uh, we need to specify what is the start of our trading period. And we can start trading only when we have got enough data points to calculate both moving averages. And obviously the long moving average takes longer time to compute, so our start period is going to be equal to the long MA periodicity. Now we can calculate the signal of our strategy, and the signal is just buy or sell, so one for buy, minus one for sell, zero for staying in cash, However, it is uh, irrelevant for MACD as you always can obtain a signal by just looking at which moving average is above or below the other. So here the logic is very simple. You trade on trends, you bank on current trends uh, persisting, extrapolating into the future. MACD is persistence based strategy. We imply that uh, positive trends, uh, share price appreciations continue well into the future and downward trends, share prices persistently falling, do also continue and lead to further losses. So it means that if in the short term there has been a share price accumulation, we can buy and get some extra return from the further appreciation of the stock price and vice versa. It means that if the short moving average is above the long moving average, we identify a positive trend and buy, so signal of plus one, and if the other way around is true, if the long moving average is above the short moving average, then we have identified a negative trend, bearish direction, and we can short sell ExxonMobil, generating a signal of minus one, which would signal sell. To implement this, we can use Boolean variables, which is basically logical variables, true or false, in Python. And uh, to easily code it in one line, we can just say two times data MA short, is greater than data MA long minus one. This configuration would return zero or one, so false or true, based on the fact whether this condition is fulfilled. So if the short moving average lies above the long moving average, we return one over here, true. Two times one minus one is going to equal to one, meaning that we'll buy in that case, and that's exactly what we want, trading on moving averages and trend persistence. And if that is false, we would have 2 times 0 minus 1, meaning minus 1, implying that we would sell in this regard, correctly uh, coding the logic of uh, moving average based trading in our Python algorithmic bot. Now we can calculate the buy and hold return, so the return of the strategy that just buys ExxonMobil and holds until the end, and compare it to the return that we would have obtained by investing according to the moving average trading rule. So the buy and hold return is just going to equal a NumPy array of the return series starting from the start date plus one until the very end. 
This means that the first day when we can obtain the return from any strategy, be it buy and hold or technical analysis, is the day that follows the day when we can calculate our uh, moving average. Simply because we invest at the close, having calculated the moving average, and we obtain the return at the close of the next trading day. This is the logic that we'll maintain throughout our code. Now, for the moving average convergence divergence return, MACD return, we can multiply this array by the uh, array of lagged signals. As we obtain the return for the following day, uh, having applied our longing or shorting of ExxonMobil based on the signal we have obtained from comparing the two moving averages. To implement that, we can say numpy array data signal, and here we should start at the start exactly, and get until the penultimate day, day minus one. So it will go until the very end and not include the very last observation, meaning that the final signal we'll trade based on would be the penultimate day, as we cannot know what the return is going to be tomorrow, only knowing the closing price for today. And here we can already calculate uh, annualized returns and risks of those two strategies and compare them to each other while also visualizing them using graphs, equity curves. So here, let's calculate our uh, annualized return of the buy and hold strategy by using the numpy product function of one plus buy and hold return. So that would calculate the product of one plus all elements of the array and raising it to the power of 252 over the length of the array buy and hold return. Here, we raise it to the power of 252 over the length of the array, meaning that we annualize it as there are 252 trading days in a year, and we subtract one so that we get annual return and not the annual uh, rate of capital appreciation. Then we can copy this and change it to reflect the uh, MACD return by just substituting the relevant variable names. And to calculate annualized risks for the buy and hold strategy and for the MACD strategy, we can apply the NumPy standard deviation function to the array of respective returns and get the daily standard deviation that way. And to annualize that, we can multiply it by 252, the number of trading days in a year, raised to the power of a half, so the square root of 252. And here we can just copy that across and uh, change the relevant variable names and calculate the risk annualized of the MACD strategy. Now, having calculated all those variables, we can visualize our results, build some simple interface, and we'll just print what is the return and risk of our buy and hold strategy. And here, to make it nice, readable, and comprehensible, we can uh, print it in percent, and round it to two decimal places so that we do not clutter uh, the uh, screen space by redundant uh, decimal places. So we can return string variable of the rounded buy and hold return times 100 rounded to two decimal places and add a percentage sign at the end. And the, for the risk, we do exactly the same to our buy and hold risk. For our MACD strategy, we can copy this and change relevant names at relevant places, as usual. And finally, we can visualize our equity curves using NumPy comprod and uh, plt plot functions. And here we can use NumPy comprod one plus bnh return. And to start at 1, we can use NumPy append 1. So we start at 1 and then we get our cumulative returns down the line. And do exactly the same with our MACD return, our technical trading rule-based return. And finally, we can enforce our code. It will download the data and perform all of the calculations. And we can see that our buy and hold strategy return and risk are minus 4.3% and 29.17%. And our MACD strategy, based on technical analysis, thankfully outperforms the market by quite a lot. It delivers annualized returns of 16.8%, which is considerably higher than average market returns of 10% per annum, 
over, over the course of long time periods. However, it is exposed to slightly higher risk of 29.14%, which is unsurprising given the fact that we uh, trade based on technical trading rules for only one stock, given the fact that we're exposed to quite a lot of idiosyncratic risk. Another notable uh, point to make here is that we started outperforming the market quite drastically only recently, uh, after the market turbulence at the start of 2020 and following the current pandemic, which means that technical analysis is profitable only when the market is uh, notably predictable and inefficient. And this is what it has been characterized with in the current um, situation. So you can be quite unprofitable, you can lag behind the market for quite a long time before your technical trading rule becomes attractive. And that's something to keep in mind when investing based on MACD or any other technical indicator that is around there. What is uh, useful uh, and uh, handy with this code is that we can just change our variables that uh, uh, identify what is the periodicity of our moving averages. So, for example, we can consider another popular 1226 moving average and see whether it does outperform what we have coded before. And we can see that it does, but not by much. Uh, note that the uh, returns have changed simply because we are now considering uh, return simulations over a different time period, as now we can invest only from day 26, when we have already calculated all moving averages. However, something we haven't implemented yet is the trading fees. When we calculated the return, we haven't subtracted any fees based on the signal uh, and uh, the change in position that could have been required to make our strategy uh, work. So here we can make a slight tweak to our code to represent the fee that we want to implement. This is a very good robustness check for your technical trading rule profitability, and it's easily implementable in Python by just uh, using uh, the logic of signal change. You would not pay any fee to your broker if you stay in the same position you were. If you continue long in the stock, you don't pay the fee. If you are continuing to short the stock, you don't need to pay the fee. But if you change your signal, if you change your position, you need to close your existing positions, open new ones, so you'll pay double the fee to the broker. So it means that we can just multiply the fee, the level of fees that we are paying, uh, onto the absolute difference of our signals, of our current signal and our lagged signal. So we can multiply it by the absolute value of the difference of our current signals and lagged signals. So to get it done, we can use numpy arrays of data signal start plus one until the end minus a numpy array of data signal from the start until uh, day minus one. And that would implement the logic of trading fees, check whether we change positions often or not so often, and charge us uh, a fee we have specified every single time we do so. And now, remembering we got our past return at 17%, roughly per annum, we can see how does such a fee uh, influence our performance. And we can see that a fee of 5 basis points reduces our annualized technical uh, trading rule uh, return by more than 1 percentage point per annum, which is quite massive. And if we increase the fee to 20 basis points and the 5 basis points, we can see that this impact starts being more and more material over the years. And obviously there exists a level of trading fees that makes active trading, including active investment based on technical analysis, unprofitable. And that's all there is for trading based on moving averages, convergence and divergence using an algorithmic trading bot coded yourself in Python. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions for videos in business, economics or finance you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel or consider supporting us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.